Hi guys, my name is Becca and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to do a July TBR. I thought I'd get like a big selection of books that I aim to read and chance are I won't read all of them or I might stray from the list but I thought it might be nice to sort of give you an indication of where my reading head is at and what sort of is piquing my interest this month. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. So the first two books that I want to mention are actually as part of a different video that I'm going to be releasing, uh, unfortunately in July now. So originally I was making this video for Pride Month and was hoping to um, release it in June. But due to other circumstances in my life, I haven't been able to read the books that I've been intending to read in as quick succession as I would like to. And so the video doesn't look like it's going to be ready for the end of June. And that video is reading books each colour of the pride flag. And each book I'm aiming, if I can, to make them pride themed books. Um, but where I can't is just a book that is the colour. Um, so I have already done green, blue, red and yellow. So all that is left on the pride flag is orange and purple. Uh, so orange, I didn't have that many options and this was the best of almost a bad bunch. So this will be the first book that I'm aiming to read in July and it is Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Now, I've heard really good things about this book and I've probably had this book for like eight years or so, like so long I've had this book. And I've heard really good things about the book but really bad things about the author and potentially that the author is quite problematic, um, which obviously isn't ideal. And so I've had a think about it and I don't think it would do anyone any good for this book to just sort of sit around as I've had it for, for the amount of time that I've had it. That being said, if it is true that uh, one of the authors or both of the authors are problematic and I will do my research after this video and if anyone has anything they want to add just uh, or tell me, put it down below. If I enjoy this book, or even if I, if I don't enjoy this book, or even if I do, and I wanted to read the ones further in the series, I am going to make a conscious effort to not do that and make sure that if I did ever read any of the other ones in the series, to make sure that the problematic author does not profit off of anything that I further read. But I thought, since I've had this book for so long, it does no one any good for it to just sit around my house collecting dust. Um, so I thought I would give this one a go. Okay, so I've actually just done some research and it seems like uh, a different book that Jay Kristoff wrote was uh, culturally appropriative or offensive to the Maori culture. And um, so therefore I will not be uh, supporting any more of his books. But like I said previously in the clips, the damage has been done. I already own the book, but I will make sure not to I will ensure that he doesn't profit from any of my future book buys or book consumption um so I'm not really sure what this book is about it's kind of written in almost like files if you can sort of see it's got like different sort of like files and stuff um this was really popular in booktube back when I bought it which I think must have been about 2014 um and so I just picked it up I really don't know what it's about and the it says something about deadly play and data and adventure i i don't really know um but i am going to give it a go because like i said i don't have many orange books so that's the first one now the second and hopefully last one i'm going to read for my challenge is perfectly on the theme of pride month and it is called proud and it is by a variety of authors and this book is uh, are poetry and short stories by a collection of artists and authors and uh, they are all LGBTQ plus and it has a purple spine. So I actually have a really limited purple spines. Um, I think one of them on my bookshelf back there is my girlfriend so that was off limits and the other one I literally have two one was this and one was um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I didn't have any interest in starting the Harry Potter series. I bought that again when I was quite young and I feel like that train has sort of passed. Um, 
Uh, and also because the video is on the theme of Pride, I thought this would be a perfect book to read. So I'll just let you know the writers and artists that feature in this book. So the writers are Caroline Bird, Simon James Green, Kay Staples, Cynthia So, David Levitham, Tanya Byrne, Michael Lee Richardson, Karen Lawler, Fox Benwell, Jess Valance, Moira Fowley Doyle and Dean Atter. And the artists are Safra Khan, Alice Oseman, Alex Bertie, Priyanka Meenakshi, Steve Anthony, Frank Duffy, David Roberts, Cameron White, Kristen Van Dam, Kate Elizada, uh, Fatty Burke and Leo Greenfield. And I believe I've literally only heard of one artist and one uh, writer in this book. So it will be really nice to get a wider sort of knowledge of LGBTQ plus creators um, who are a part of this book. So yeah, that is another, that is the second book that I hope to read in, in July. The third book I again have had for oh, donkey's years, maybe like 10 years. And it is called The List of My Desires by Gregoire Delacorte. And um, I'm making a conscious effort to read books um, that have been on my shelves for a long time because I keep buying more books and I don't keep reading the really old ones I'll just read the new ones that I buy and that isn't good for my bookshelf it's it feels like a waste of money to have books on my shelf that have been there since I was 14 and I'm turning 21 this month um it just seems counterproductive so I'm making a conscious effort to if any of them seem like something I fancy then I make an effort to pick them up or I also make a conscious effort just to sort of re-familiarise myself with books that I might not have picked up or looked at in potentially five, six years. So this is one of them books. Um, like I said, it's called The List of My Desires. And I believe I picked this one up on a uh, recommendation from Carrie Hope Fletcher's uh, channel back when she made booktube videos. And um, I think I blindly picked this up because I had no idea what it was about, but I just sort of trusted her. And from what I gather, it's this middle-aged woman who is not happy with her life and then she wins the lottery and she she is reluctant to accept the money and then she starts to make a list of what her heart desires and what could maybe um uh, what i assume she might spend this millions on um and then it says something very cryptic she didn't suspect for one moment that the decision might be taken out of her hands it's a very short book it is literally 200 pages so i think that'll be a really nice short one to sort of read possibly one that i take so i've got placement at the beginning of the next month um and i'll be driving around to different farms uh following vets and if i have some downtime or over lunch because i don't know where i'm going to end up and where the next farm that i need to get to is and whether it will make sense for me to come home i will probably just keep a book like this in my car so that i can just have a sort of read and not spend all that time on my phone and just run my data out especially because farms in rural Surrey are miles away from any cell reception so I think a book like this will be great to keep in my car. So the fourth book um, that I hope to pick up this month um, and potentially won't because it is the chunkiest book on this pile not to fat shame but she is kind of she's kind of on the larger side and that is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Apparently it's an iconic terror. I haven't read any Stephen King novels and this one I've sort of heard about sitting around because the new film came out. Um, well, it's not so new anymore, but a new film came out recently, a few years back, and it seemed to have a plot that I kind of wasn't too horrified by. And it was a good size of Stephen King novel to start. Uh, the rest look a bit terrifying for me. I could be wrong though, because this could also be terrifying. Uh, from what I gather, from what I've kind of looked up on the internet and from what I've heard around, this uh, couple and their children move to rural Maine and they go exploring in the woods one day and they find this weird burial ground that appears to be a pet cemetery. And the story then goes on where they lose their cat in a tragic accident and they speak to their neighbour and I believe they then go and bury this cat in this burial ground or the pet cemetery. And that is sort of the catalyst for all these events that occur afterwards um, that are catastrophic from what I can gather. No pun intended. Yeah, they, they keep calling it iconic terror. So maybe I'm not gonna take this one to a secluded woodlands um, in a rural farm in Surrey with me. Maybe I will 
purely read this one in daylight when my partner is at home and I'm not alone. Maybe I'll be absolutely terrified by this one, but I'm excited to uh, give it a go because I um, have said in a previous video or maybe one that's coming out, I read The Taking of Annie Thorne very recently and apparently, according to Goodreads comments, it was loosely based on this book. And um, by loosely based, it seemed to have been the worst version of this book. So I thought I would try the original. The second to last book, the penultimate, if you will, is this book called love is for losers which you if you have seen my book haul that i recently uploaded it should be the last video before this um i had recently bought and this seems to be about a 15 year old girl who initially thinks that love is for losers and then she meets this girl called emma in a local charity shop or thrift shop um and it sort of turns her idea of life on its head it's sort of how she navigates that whole world like I said before, I'm trying to sort of broaden my horizons of uh, LGBTQ plus literature. And so this, when I saw it, I really wanted to pick it up. And the last book that I'm going to be reading is different to any book that I have ever featured in a video. And that is because it's 40 pages long and is a book for literal infants. Um, you might have seen this around and it is getting really bad press recently. And I actually didn't know it existed until Jack Edwards made a video on it. And that is The Bench by uh, the Duchess of Sussex, aka Meghan Markle. I watched Jack's video on it and he said it was a lovely book based on father and child um, love. And I just thought, yeah, I, want, I know she doesn't need the support um, because she is literally a princess and minted. But I just have very strong feelings about the hatred that Meghan Markle gets in the UK, especially. I'm not sure how she's perceived in other countries. But the tabloids and the media uh, majority in the UK absolutely rip Meghan Markle apart. And so if I could do one thing to sort of help that, counteract that by buying her book and making it uh, get one step further up the charts of, of children's books then I sort of wanted to be a part of that and so if it if it helped make her known that she had support in the UK then I'm happy with that as well as the fact that this is the most beautiful book um so I can barely fit it all in and let's see what it looks like without the dust jacket H&A so that's obviously for Harry and Archie um is just so lovely and this i just i haven't read it yet from what i gathered from jack edwards video the sentiment just seems just lovely let me see here it seems to be harry uh, and archie there and then um the thing that melted my cold cold heart uh was the dedication and it says for the man and the boy who make my heart go pump pump and you can just see that she has so much love for her kid and her husband and this whole book is just a sentiment to that and I could go on and on about how much I love Meghan Markle but I won't um, and I will just say that I think this book is absolutely lovely and in the far, 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 far future when I uh, inevitably have kids I can't wait to pass this book down to them and on that incredibly soppy note about a book from a woman who will literally never know i exist um that is the end of my tbr for july let me know down below in the comments what you're planning on reading for july do you have any recommendations for me have you read any of these books what do you think of Meghan markle but do not leave any hate for her because I will not take Meghan Markle slander on this channel. If you hadn't just realised from the 10 minutes that I just talked about how much I love her. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe because that would really make my day and my life and really help my channel. And yeah, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye!